reefers, welcome back. Okay, so today we're going to actually talk about dipping your coral. I'm having a bit of an issue with my own, with my own uh, display tank in the shop. Um, I've got some photosynthetic flatworm that's starting to go a little bit out of control. I do have two rats in there to specifically keep them under control. And they've been doing a marvelous job up until the last week or so. And I see the population of the flatworm is starting to increase. So I'm going to help them out by doing a dip. Okay. Where I am at the moment, it's not so severe that I would need to do um, a, a treatment of flatworm exit. This is a great pro product for getting rid of flatworm. You just need to be careful when using it because, you know, as the flatworm die, they release toxins into the water. And you've got to be on guard when you're doing it to make sure that everything is in, in good health and be on standby to do a big water change in that. So I only use these in severe cases or if I'm dealing with a very bad breakout with the more um, invasive uh, flatworms that actually eat the flesh of your coral and they seem to like your, your hammers and torches and frog spawn, especially the wall out of the wall variety out of them all. But like I said today, we're dealing with a photosynthetic flatworm. My RAS normally keep them under control, but I see I have a little bit of, a, of an outbreak. So I'm going to do a dip on the more severe um, pieces of coral it's mostly the soft coral uh, some mushrooms and a and a pin cushion so i'm going to show you how to use a product called af protec dip it's by aquaforest it's a good product i've used it for quite a while this is actually an active bottle of mine that i that i use quite regularly and it works really well okay so to start off we we would need the dip it normally comes with a little measuring cap but i prefer to use a little one mil syringe as i don't do it in large volumes um, it's normally half a mil or 0.5 mils to one liter of tank water. Okay, so what I've done here, I've prepared three containers. The one container, this, this is tank water with the actual coral in. This is going to be my dip water. And then the coral on the left is going to be my rinse water. Okay, so starting off, this is pre-measured. Um, this is one and a half liters. So I'm going to use 0.75 mils of dip. 0.75. Add this into my dipping water. Now this is just normal tank water. Give it oh, and a turkey baster. I'll show you what we do with the turkey baster just now. I like to use it to agitate the water. Give that a good stir in. Okay, so we're going to dip these. We're going to dip these corals for five minutes. Okay, so what I like to do, there's, there's the solution ready. I like to take the corals. I don't know if you can see on this, on this one here. If you can see there, the little black spots on the outside of the skeleton. I mean, well, outside of the flesh. That's the, the flatworm itself. I'm going to drop that in there. Same with these little mushrooms. Just a step I forgot to cover now is before you do this, while it's in this little container over here, just go over the coral, the rock, and make sure that there's nothing in there that you don't want to lose, like a shrimp or snails or anything important for your tank. Try and get them off before dipping. Okay, I'm going to start the clock now. There's, it's going to be for five minutes. So what I like to do is the first minute, I just like it to simmer, to soak in, in the solution. While it's doing that, it's just getting into all the little nooks and crannies of the coral and starting to loosen up the pest, whatever the pest might be. I mean, remember, if you, if you, keep, if you don't go over these rocks and make sure you haven't got any of your tank mates in there, like your little snails and that, this will kill them. So it's very important to, to make sure you've got all those off your rocks. Just give that a little bit of a mix. See, what I like to use with this here is just to give it a bit of a, a forceful blow over the coral, like a little bit of current, so it starts to lift off the pests. And like I say, I normally wait for about a minute. Just let that soak in and simmer nicely. Start loosening up the flatworm, and I'm on the minute mark now. And I just like to just blow over the coral, just create some force to 
lift them off as the time goes they lift off a lot easier but also it's getting into the spots where where you know the the dip might not actually get into properly like even over the rocks where you know the flatworm would be you you just basically want to make sure that the dip is getting to all the little hidden spots and getting rid of all the flatworm I just give a nice bow. I don't know if you can see that, but I mean, there's a lot less that were on there from the last time. If you look there, see all the dots there. See how they're just falling off. Now, before I added the dip, these would have had a great um, foothold on the coral. I mean, think about it, they're inside an aquarium with almost 70 times water turnover flow and they sit on the aquarium uh, they, they sit on the sorry excuse me they sit on the coral quite uh, tight so the dip really does help loosen them up and just give it a good spray even on the rocks because they do they do tend to sit on the rock you know as they're moving from from coral to coral Oh, and then five minutes is, is more than enough. I mean, this AF dip is actually a, a good dip for, for disease as well, not just pests. I mean, I have been using it for a while now, and I'm quite happy with it. I mean, and you're using such a, such a small amount. I mean, if you're doing a lot more coral, obviously you'll use a lot more water. But it's 0.5 mils of dip to one liter of tank water. So, I mean, this little, this little solution I've done now, I've used 0.75 mils, as this is one and, a half, one and a half liters of tank water. Okay, so we've got a little bit, a little bit over a miniature, a minute and a half or so. <clears throat> I see I've got some, some bristle worm at the bottom there. Let's see, let's get those guys out of there. I just like to use a turkey blaze baster. Gives it a nice bit of flow. Now, th this is something that you should take into practice when buying new coral. Because this will just prevent any transfer of any pest from one person to the, to, to the, to the other. I mean, you, you don't know what is in the other person's tank, even if they say, oh, they don't have any issues. It just takes one little, one little coral that has a few eggs on it. But unfortunately, a dip isn't going to help with the eggs, but that's where quarantining your coral come in. Actually, quarantining all your livestock before adding it into a system is great practice. But, you know, this is just something to look into. You go buy yourself a coral give it a, a five minute dip if you have a quarantine system awesome that would be the best thing to do so you can actually dip it before putting into the quarantine and then place it into quarantine and keep it under observation for a couple of weeks uh, give it a dip every week as a precaution if you wish and then when you are happy that your coral don't have any pests on them then you can go ahead and and move them into your main display. That way you should keep your main display almost, almost guaranteed pest free. Okay, there's five minutes up. Let's remove these out of here. So if you look there, and all those little black spots are gone. Just give it a little rinse there nicely. Take it into the fresh tank water. Just remember, give it a good little rinse off. So add that bristle worm. There's another one on there. Let's leave him there for a second. I'll deal with the bristle worm. A little loose mushroom there. I'll put him on a sand bed. Let him connect to something. Okay, that bristle worm fell off. Yeah. Okay, and that's it. That's a, a coral dip. Now all those little flatworm will will have died off and fallen off. If you look in there, I got a couple of I got a couple of bristle worm that came out of that one rock. 
I mean, Bristleworm, they, they can be a pest when they overtake an aquarium. Um, if you can't, uh, you won't be able to see that so well on camera, but let's see if I can bring it up to this camera. See the little black spots floating around the bottom there? There's quite a bit there. You can't see it too well on the camera, but there's a lot of, of little flatworm that came off those corals. Okay, so that's it. That's dipping your coral. Um, very good practice to do before, um, before putting new coral into an aquarium. And obviously, if you do have a little outbreak of a pest, something that managed to sneak through quarantine or, or dipping, if you, if you are going to do the quarantine method. I mean, if you dip, it's never, it's never a hundred percent guarantee that you're going to get everything. Because remember that, um, remember that, uh, if there's eggs on the coral of those flatworms, for example, or, or any pests, the, the dips don't generally get into the egg. So the egg is, is in its own little its own little environment and it's totally safe from the dip. So with that, a quarantine would work better where you can actually leave the, the corals in its own little system, dip before putting in to get rid of any of the adults, if there are any adults or, 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 or freshly hatched um, pests place into quarantine you can do a, a dip every week to be to be on the safe side and just monitor that coral within within i'd say you know two weeks is a little bit short i would go more four weeks before putting the coral in but you know not everyone has the space to set up a quarantine okay so it, it's you got to you got to weigh up your pros and cons of setting up a quarantine yes everything leads to a quarantine being one of the, the the better options to go for but sometimes it just doesn't fit it, it yeah so i would always suggest it quarantine i don't always practice it myself so i can't preach it but it is always a good option to to look at quarantining quarantining a coral before putting it in but if you are not going to quarantine i would suggest dip now this little bit of flatworm that I've got in my aquarium now was a case of laziness. Took a coral and said, ah, I'll put it in the tank and I've got flatworm now. Now I used to dip all my coral all the time. And maybe it wasn't from that one that I didn't dip. Maybe it was from um, something that I did dip but eggs and I didn't catch the eggs and I added it into the aquarium. It's hard to say, but you know, Stuff like this does happen, and you just need to deal with it when it does. Uh, like I said in my last video with um, choosing your fish, a good working fish is always a good option. They will help keep pests under control. Like, like I said, my rats normally do a good job in keeping the flatworm under control, but they seem to have slacked off a little bit. And like normally with them being active and taking, the, taking control of the flatworm, on, on a colony of mushroom, I'd, I could count them... With the fingers on on each hand so i'm not more than 10 flatworm on a colony of mushroom where i've dipped it now where there were more than 10 or or well, well definitely more than 10 per leaf of mushroom so obviously my i don't know if my wrasse have gone off the taste of them because they seem to be eating more pellets and, and i see my timor wrasse are starting to hunt more for bigger prey so i'm thinking that you know they're not he's not satisfied with with the with the flatworm and I refuse to put a six line in my aquarium. Six line rats. Great at taking care of flatworm, but they can be yeah, bullies. For the for a small rats, they can be bullies. Okay, so that's it. Like I said, it's a good practice to dip your coral. It's a great practice to quarantine your cor coral, but like I said, not everyone has the space to do it. It doesn't take a lot to do it. It's a small aquarium, but it is that extra time and effort that goes into it. I mean, but it could save this issue. I mean, like, like I said, with the flatworm exit, it's a great product, but if not used properly or if not monitored properly, it can, it can cause issues with your aquarium. So I only use it on extreme cases like this here. I feel I can still control it and my wrasse are still eating them. They're just not eating them as well as they were. So maybe I need to add a new a new um ras and to start taking care of it again but anyway we'll cross that bridge once i see what happens after this dip 
And like I said many times, guys, thanks so much for watching. I really do appreciate your guys' support so far. I mean, we're a new channel, but, um, you know, it's, uh, it's good to see the growth and it's, you know, it makes me feel proud. If you guys haven't subscribed or liked the videos, please do so. Like I said, it does help us grow and really appreciate your support so far. Thank you so much for watching and happy reefing.